Can you see atoms? Hello, this is Chris speaking, Shores of Infinity, with a video about consciousness. Can you see atoms? In natural sciences of today, it is assumed that everything consists of atoms and atoms of subatomic particles. Can you see them? Almost no one doubts that this is so, but no one can see them. Why can you not see them? Because it doesn't make any practical sense. Now, what you see is only true to a nervous system, to your nervous system. So your nervous system needs to take in what your perception, like your eyes, take in and then certain kinds of information get filtered out and others get passed onwards and then an image is formed. This is what the ancient Indians call manas. We just call it nervous system. But how exactly the nervous system converts this data that comes in from the eyes and filters out some information and then passes it on to what we call the central nervous system and then forms an image is not very well known. In Europe, the Indians describe it very well when they describe manas, but in uh, modern natural sciences it's not very well known. What we do know is that most of what we perceive is filtered out, about 99%. Actually, your eyes can see atoms and subatomic particles like electrons, neutrons, quarks, and it goes on and on. But this is not helpful information, not in daily life. So if you could see these particles, you would not see anything concrete, no things, but only millions of tiny particles racing around, a chaos. This chaos needs to be formed. Your central nervous system takes in the information from your eyes and other organs, sense organs, filters out about 99% of it and then forms a picture. Literally imagines. Yeah? Imagination means to make a picture, to make an image. Imagination or formation. The form is created by your nervous system. From a purely physical point of view, there is no fixed form. Your perception together with your nervous system creates the form that you then think you perceive. So actually, you're making up reality as you go along, scientifically. Modern physics. There is not even anything esoterical, philosophical or spiritual in there. That's modern physics. Hard natural science carried out to its logical end. No one wants to think that far, usually. Because, again, it's not practical. By carrying it out logically to its end, you cannot build machines or earn money. But it is happening. So, this selection process of 99% out and 1% gets passed on and then formed into an image what is this based upon? It's based upon your experiences, on what is familiar. So the more experience you have had already, the older you are, the more is filtered out, because everything is matched to what is familiar already. The younger you are as a baby, the more you actually still perceive, but you don't know what to do with it. You don't have a frame of reference. Babies and children, they can perceive much more than adults because they don't have a frame of reference or not a fixed or so many frames of reference yet. So they can perceive more. In adults, your nervous system reproduces the known and thus the less disturbing reality. It's about being less disturbing, less confusing. Again and again, creates 
the same thing, a similar version of reality. Reality seems to be the same every day and also similar to different people because we have been growing up together in the same cultural bubble. Normal and real is what we are told and taught is normal and real. It's a cultural thing. It's an education. What does the word education mean? It means forming images. Same thing. So it's cultural. Another culture may and often does describe reality differently. Because for them different things are familiar. Once different cultures meet, there's a mix-up. But the more a culture is isolated, the more different the interpretations will be. Nowadays, most of humanity is only one culture. It's the Mediterranean culture conglomerate of the Romans, Greeks, Jews, Arabs, Persians, Phoenicians, Hittites, Egyptians, Sumerians, Assyrians, and so on. They have conquered and are in dominion right now. There are very few, almost no other, other cultures, human cultures left. And if there are, there are quite small and often crippled by suppression. Anyhow, what you think you see is actually only one version of what is really in front of you, what is out there. One version you have decided to agree upon and subscribe to. Like a newsletter or YouTube channel, you're a subscriber to that form version of reality. Thus, we can talk about stuff. We are using the same language or similar languages, same terminology, same imagery. We can assume that we are talking about more or less the same thing. If we both see a red Ferrari in front of us and we talk about it, we can assume it's more or less the same thing. Although we may have different associations and memories tied to it, or values, connotations and so on. But this does not prove anything is what it seems. It just proves that we agree upon it for simplicity's sake. Theoretically, we could decide to see more or a different angle or version, but we don't. Why? Because as soon as we try, or as soon as we do, we fear to become crazy, which is true somehow. Yeah? What is crazy? Crazy is to interpret reality differently. To open your brain valve, as a friend of mine likes to say, and then more information comes streaming in, and at first you don't know what to do with it, because again, the frame of reference is missing. There's an important saying, there's an important saying that the map is not the territory. The map is not the territory. But most people pretend that the map is the territory. Now, we, if we look at a map, we say, okay, this is the border between this and there, and this is uh, Los Angeles, and this is the Sierra Nevada. So it's not. It's a drawing or an image of it on a piece of paper. We tend to forget that the map is a tool, just as our eyes are a tool, our nervous system is a tool, our memory is a tool, and so on. And most of all, language. Language is a tool. It's a description tool, just like computer codes and languages nowadays. And it facilitates sociability, communication. But what you say is not reality. It's only the thing that you can describe with the help of that language, of that tool. So just like that, the map is not the territory, the language is not the thing you're describing. Just like that, the image, the idea, the label is not the thing you are referring to or we are referring to. It is an interpretation, an inference. Stephen Wolinsky describes this very well. He calls it an inference. What's an inference? An inference is something 
out of a cause and effect chain. So not only do we perceive things and then form images that are not objective, but based subjectively upon our so-called knowledge and memories and emotions and thoughts and so on, beliefs, values, norms, culture. Not only that, but we already immediately start a cause and effect chain without knowing if there is any cause and effect, but we think there is. We see something, then we set it into a relation to us, and then we think there's a cause and effect chain. Because there's a thing, and there's me. So the thing, for example, causes me to be happy, or afraid, or angry. Does it now? Or is it just there? Is the fact that the thing is just there, at the utmost, there's a chaos of subatomic particles that we interpret to be a thing, and it's there. But where does the cause and effect chain come in here? Nowhere. It's an interpretation based upon, again, our memories, experiences, thoughts, emotions, neurotransmitters, and so on. So it's an inference. Within the context of what we have agreed upon earlier, and thus presuppose, we presuppose things, and then of course it confirms our view of reality. If you take away all those presuppositions, all is gone. There's no more reality. Then reality is just a big soup of atomic and subatomic particles flying around. So really our thoughts, emotions, memories, they make up reality. Of what you call it, reality. is made up by yourself. It's a simplification of what is actually happening, happening out there, which is too complex and too disturbing and too chaotic. And you repeat this process again and again and again until you believe your own story and think there's a linear time stream in which uh, the same thing happens again and again and the same things around you and so on. And that's the difference between idealism and materialism. Materialism says, okay, we stop here. It seems to be true, so we won't discuss it anymore. It's practical to ignore the fact that we are imagining reality, that we're making it up. While idealism says, okay, actually, we have no idea what's out there. There's something beyond our capabilities. And what we call reality is a manifestation of that unspeakable thing and what we make from it. Because the purpose of the nervous system and all its functions and tools like the neurotransmitters is to organize chaos. There's something in the human being that cannot stand prolonged chaos. So to have a better chance of survival, we create order or the semblance of order, the illusion of order, the illusion of continuity. Creating reality and then agreeing upon it that this is really reality, not just an idea, an image or an illusion makes us feel safer and makes us survive better. It's probably really better for survival. Now, what is called enlightenment is kind of the opposite. It is turning around and going back to the source and thus enlightenment is not a method of survival. Enlightenment will not help you to survive better. It will not help you to feel safer. Not even 
to make you happier or something. Enlightenment is just to go back to reverse this process that you have been doing all your life and taught to do, to fit in. It's normative conformity. To take away all these labels and conformities and inferences and interpretations, go back to the source and see where did it all start and what's actually real. What do I actually perceive? What is fact? And what is made up? That is why so many gurus and anti-gurus, they say there's no advantage of enlightenment except that it's true. You finally see what it's true. Huh? That's all. Many people think more or less unconsciously that once they're enlightened, they will be safe, finally. Safe, free, powerful, in control, complete, loved, lovable, and so on. All these things people imagine that they don't have and that they want to have. But this is not the case. Enlightenment is to strip all the layers away that you have been adding all your life until now. And then see what's left. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all my patrons. Thank you for liking, subscribing and joining me as a patron. And leave your comments below and see you soon.